Hi, welcome to a new video. Did you know that most cars are only used for about 5% of the time? That means for 95% of the time, they're just sat parked doing absolutely nothing. Imagine if there was a way to put your car to good use while it was sat there doing nothing. With electric cars, obviously they've got batteries. So what if all of the electricity you put into your battery at off-peak times could be sold back to the grid during peak times? And what if you could get paid an estimated 300 pounds a year for doing this? Well, that's exactly what vehicle to grid or V2G promises to solve. Back in July, 2019, I had a V2G charger installed. Okay, so it's Tuesday the 16th of July and today we are getting uh, the vehicle to grid charger installed. Um, so yeah, one of the engineers is outside already uh, and I'm sure that more will be turning up later on. So yeah, let's see what uh, the installation process is like. Getting it installed took a few hours, or in my case a few visits, because there were a few technical issues that we needed to work out. Um, it required an earth rod to be drilled into the ground, but it was done discreetly. Um, the wiring was installed. Um, I didn't need an extra consumer unit. They were able to actually share the um, consumer unit that had been installed for my pod point charger. Now, it does charge a little bit slower than the pod point charger, uh, so it charges at 6 kilowatts versus 7 kilowatts, but this isn't really noticeable for my usage. Um, you know, I plug the car in on the evenings, I, I go to use it in the mornings, and it's fully charged, so the fact that it's a tiny bit slower to, to do that job, it makes no difference to me. The vehicle to grid charger obviously exports as well, um, and it can do so at 6 kilowatts. Uh, however, that's limited to 3.6 kilowatts initially um, because uh, you need to apply to your DNO in order to uh, get permission to export above 3.6 kilowatts. But over apply to the DNO on your behalf, you don't need to do anything. Uh, they send you um, a form, you print it out, you sign it, you scan it, you send it back. Um, and then they have, you basically give them permission to arrange all of this on your behalf. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's an utterly painless process. You basically just send them a signed piece of paper. So one thing you might notice uh, straight away is the unit doesn't use the normal Type 2 port on the car. Instead it uses the Chadamo port because that can handle bi-directional charging on Nissan Leaf cars built after 2015. Um, a toggle switch had to be installed uh, so that I could only use one charger or the other at a time because my fuse is only rated for 80 amps um, and they didn't want to uh, run the risk of me using both chargers at the same time even though I couldn't fit two cars on my drive but <laughs> that's kind of besides the point. Um, from a safety point of view they had to do it so it went in. Um, there's also an extra isolator switch just before the vehicle grid charger as well um, and, but all of this was installed uh, and it was done quite neatly um, and uh, yeah so here's the sort of end result. Um, the system is very much in testing at the moment, so it does have the occasional hiccup. Um, it's not a finished consumer product yet, I must stress this. It is very much still a trial, um, similar to a beta in, in computer software. Um, but it does get better with every software update uh, to the charger and to the app. Um, it's come a long way, even in just you know the nine months or so that I've had it. The whole system is controlled via a web app, which you can install into the home screen of your iPhone or Android phone. Um, and inside the app you'll have features which will show you the current state of charge in your car, the current rate of charge because it's actually variable. Um, so when charging your car, uh, dependent on load on the grid, it might give you the full 6 kilowatts or if uh, the grid is under load it might slow you down to say 3 kilowatts or 4 kilowatts. So it might slow you down to say 4 kilowatts or 3 kilowatts or it's possibly even as low as 1 kilowatt. Um, or it might even stop the charge altogether until uh, there's a better time to be charging your vehicle. Um, now inside the app there's a button uh, marked boost and if you tap that regardless of um, what's going on on the grid you it basically tells the charger that you're in a hurry and no matter what it will just use the full 6 kilowatt uh, power of the charger to get your battery charged as quickly as possible. Um, so this is useful you know, if you get a phone call and realise suddenly oh, you've got to go out quickly. Um, you can, yeah, you know, the charger doesn't get in your way. Uh, you, know, you just hit the boost button and it just charges at full speed to get you on your way. Um, alternatively, if you've got someone visiting and they've got an electric car, obviously just hit the boost button and they'll get, you know, full speed charge. Um, 
what you can also do in the app is you can set a schedule so let's say let's say you work nine to five and you need the car to be ready for 8 a.m every morning um you can tell the, the app that you want the car to be ready for eight o'clock every morning by ticking the boxes and setting the times and then what it'll do is it knows how big your battery is it knows how long it takes to charge it back up to 100 percent so when it needs uh, to start charging it will automatically schedule that in um, so that you, by, by the time 8 a.m. rolls around every morning you've got a full battery ready to go so for my use uh, my schedule is a bit more flexible I actually turn off scheduling entirely uh, unless I know I've got a specific meeting I need to be at um, what this means is uh, Ovo and by extension the grid at large can actually take power from my battery at any time it's convenient for the grid what I still find however is that most mornings my battery is at 100% anyway. Um, it's not a set time it's at 100% by, but most of the morning, you know, let's say by 10 a.m. every morning, it'll be at 100%. Um, most of the discharging tends to happen at peak times, which is going to be between 4 p.m. and sort of 10 p.m. in the evening seems to be the main sort of windows. Occasionally, it, I've, I've seen it export as early as 12 noon. Uh, sometimes I've seen it exporting as late as, say, 3, 4 a.m. Um, but generally, it's only a little bit of export. So, um, you know, maybe sudden surges on the grid and things like that. Um, so, yeah, you have basically full control over it. If you're in a hurry, you hit the boost button. If you know that you, you need it for a certain time every day, you can tell the system and it, and it will do that for you. Another thing you can do is you can set the charge range, uh, which isn't to do with how far you can travel, but it's to do with how much of the battery you will allow vehicle to grid to basically cycle. So let's say you only wanted to use a small portion of your battery. You can say, you know, don't run my battery any lower than 60% and don't take it over 95%. And it will spec that and will only use that amount. It means you'll get less uh, money because you won't be exporting as much into the grid. But if you, you know, let's say you, you're out in the sticks and you need to have at least 65% of your battery or 50% of the battery or whatever it is for you, you can set that as the minimum and it won't go below that. You can also set an upper point. So if, um, by default, it doesn't go to 100% uh, when charging your battery back up. It will go to 95% and stop. So it doesn't have to spend a lot of time um, cycling that top kind of 5% of the battery, uh, which it helps protect your battery. Now you can actually take that low and say, right, okay, I don't need to charge between 80, charge beyond 80%. Um, so for those of you who miss the feature from older uh, Nissan Lease, where you could say, I don't want to charge beyond 80%, you can actually get that back through the charger because um, the charger, being on the Chatham Airport, knows the current state of charge in your car. It knows that you've got 80% because the car reports uh, its charge over Chatham uh, And so the charger can go, right, okay, you're at 80%. Uh, the owner said, I want, it, I want to shut off here and it will stop the charge. And every day, your car will be back at 80% um, when you want to get in every day. So you've got quite a lot of control over how it works. The default range is um, between 25% and 95%. So it will discharge all the way down to 25% of your battery and it will cycle it back up to 95% of your battery. It doesn't actually seem to negatively impact the battery state of health. I've not done hard and fast testing on the numbers, but anecdotal um, indications from Leaf Spy have shown me that basically my state of health was going down at the exact same rate before vehicle to grid as after vehicle to grid, even though my battery is being cycled every day. It's actually doing it negligible harm, if anything. Some reports on some of the forums have actually seen an increase in state of health uh, as a result of cycling with vehicle to grid. Now, I've not seen that, but I haven't seen any. Uh, yeah, I've not seen it causing my state of health to dwindle as a result of uh, the daily cycling. So, um, I, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't seem to have any bad impact on the car whatsoever. So let's move on to how much this is actually earning me. So on my current tariff with Ovo, um, for every unit I import, I'm charged 15 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, and for every unit I export, uh, I'm credited 30 pence per kilowatt hour. So it basically works out that I'm earning around 15 pence per kilowatt hour for every unit I export, right? So 30p minus the 15p I originally spent. Before I got this installed, I overestimated that I'd probably make about 300 pounds a year based on, you know, average usage. I do work from home quite regularly, so I don't always um, travel to an office to, to do work. 
so my car is on the drive a lot more of the time. However, most of the exporting happens in the evenings when people will be home from work anyway. So I don't think it makes a huge difference to these numbers. But I am finding that last the last few months I've been sort of consistently exporting around 460 kilowatt hours per month, which means I've actually been getting a credit of about 140 pounds every month. Um, now, obviously, half of that is paying back what I've spent to import the electric. So I'm actually earning in terms of profit. Uh, about £70 a month, which is way higher than the £300 a year that OVO originally suggested I might make from this system. When this product is ready, should do I think people should get it? Yes, absolutely. If you have a driveway or if, you, you know, if you've got off street parking and you can have uh, a charger attached to your house and you don't mind switching your electricity supplier to OVO Energy, then you should absolutely go for this. So OVO aren't the cheapest electricity supplier out there, but when you factor in what I'm actually earning from the vehicle to grid system, it's actually quite a decent deal that I'm, I'm getting here. Um, uh, plus you get to kind of play with an exciting new technology. Um, you know, I'm really pleased I've been able to get on board with this experiment. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to help test the project uh, and also to get a sizable chunk of my electricity bills written off with these vehicle to grid export credits. Um, so yeah, if this is something that interests you, by all means, go get it. Um, there is a wait list if you want to try and get on the trial. Um, I'll put a link down in the video description below, uh, or you can go to Over Energy's website. Um, the trial is limited to a thousand people. I don't know if all of those slots are gone. Um, there are about 18 months left on the trial, after which point Over may decide to drop it, but I think it's much more likely they will continue to roll it out. Uh, and now just roll it out to you know, the main public audience. Uh, so anyone who wants it should be able to get it at that point. Now, OVO aren't the only company working on this. There are other vehicle to grid solutions out there. Uh, obviously, I've only tested the OVO one. Uh, I think this is the only one that's actually in the field with consumers at the moment. I could be wrong on that. So if, I, if that's not the case, drop me a comment down below and obviously uh, correct me because, uh, yeah, I'd love to learn if anyone else has got something like this with another supplier. So, yeah, that's all for this video. Um, if you did like this video, please hit that like button. Uh, if you didn't like this video, there's a button for that somewhere around too, I'm sure. Um, if you don't already, please subscribe uh, to the channel and hit that bell icon. About 80% of the people who watch my videos don't actually subscribe. Um, so it'd be good to get a few more of you on board as subscribers. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.